So in this video, we're going to talk about performance enhancing drugs, the second one. Um, so let's get dive straight into it. We've got narcotic analgesics, which is the first drug. And these are drugs which can be used to reduce pain. So normally athletes will inject these into the affected areas and it allows them to play through the pain of an injury so they can play a cup final. So it's quite a potent drug and it comes from um, a type of drug called an opioid, which you might have heard of for heroin or methadone, like severe painkillers, which obviously can become really addictive and they're highly, um, highly, um, what's the high risk of overdose and whatnot as well. So they're pretty dangerous drug, these narcotic analgesics. Um, they depress the central nervous system and they give you pain relief from really painful injuries like a sprain or a strain or a blister or an area that's bruised and just wouldn't you wouldn't normally be able to play for. Um, so therefore they do, they will increase the risk of long-term injury because if you play through the pain, it may be that you numb it for the time being, but further down the line, it's going to make that situation worse. So there's certainly a short-term fix, not a long-term thing. But some of the reasons people take narcotic analgesics is to return to competition ASAP. They also mask other injuries. And this sense of euphoria means this sense of, oh, I'm above everything. Um, I've, I feel no pain. I feel invincible. So that's often why athletes take them. Um, so yeah, so that's narcotic analgesics. Uh, there are pretty serious health risks to this. Loss of concentration, loss of balance, loss of coordination, uh, hallucinations. Uh, they are pain. They are painkillers, so they can become addictive as well as we've already spoken about. So we look at the stimulants. Uh, stimulants stimulate the central nervous system. They increase your reaction time, but they actually make your decision making worse because you make spur of the moment decisions you don't necessarily think through. So these are drugs that have an effect on the central nervous system, and they um, they increase your mental capacity and your ability, ability to be able to react to the onset of stimuluses. So this is the second most common sport um, drugs taken in sport. And these are like amphetamines, co cocaine as well as nicotine and caffeine. And these substances like caffeine will be on the list of banned substances for athletes that are not allowed to take. The reason that athletes do take them is to increase alertness. They're cognitive and they're somatic and mental and physical. So they're ready to respond to like the starter's gun or a whistle at the start of a race. They can overcome tiredness, keep them sort of energetic, and they can offset the effects of lactic acid, which is a byproduct that goes to the muscles. By taking these, you're gonna increase your heart rate you're going to have irregularities in your heart um, and also it's going to increase your high blood pressure and they can become quite addictive you can get addicted to caffeine insomnia means lack of sleep it means you can't go to sleep at night you stay awake can caffeine if you've ever drunk a coffee or a coke before bedtime you'll know that it keeps you wide awake so that's what insomnia is irritability is you have this sugar rush and you have this low when you crash back down it makes you irritable and the sugars and the glucoses in your body make you crave more of it so that's stimulants. We know the health risks. We've just spoken about these. Let's dive into um, the last drug, which is peptide hormones. And this is a really big one. So Lance Armstrong, we know, is a cyclist from Tour de France that got caught taking these. Peptide hormones are found naturally in the human body, but they're also taken synthetically, which means artificially, not human found, um, as a drug. They increase muscle growth and they assist in the recovery from injury after heavy, intense sessions in the gym. Um, specifically, they increase the number of red blood cells and red blood cells are oxygen carriers in the blood and they increase it. So we need extra oxygen for high intensity uh, aerobic exercise like triathlons, marathons, cycle races, uh, long distance events. There's two types. There's the growth, growth hormone, which is the HGH, and there's the erythroprotein, which is the EPO. Most commonly, we talk about the EPO. A comparatively new drug compared to steroids, HGH, the human growth hormone, is used for muscle development. It's also thought to have fewer side effects, and it, been, it can be detected through blood tests, which is why athletes sometimes take a diuretic as a masking agent to hide the trace of that drug. Whereas erythroprotein is slightly different. It increases the production of red blood cells, and therefore, the amount of hemoglobin, which is oxy red blood cells available to O2, and it increases your aerobic capacity. So where normally you might only be able to work at 70% of your maximum heart rate, you'd be able to work at 80, 90 for longer periods of time. So it's essentially a cheating version of altitude training. So all drugs in sport are bad. Blood doping is the last one. You can take blood and you can dope by taking transfusions and inject other people or your own blood into your system to give you the benefits that EPO gives you, higher red blood cell count, being able to compete for longer periods of time. Okay, so that's a quick overview of performance enhancing drugs. Just remember that they're not great. They can be really dangerous for the system and uh, don't ever be tempted to take them.